Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco F3, the Redmi K40, also known as the Mi 11X in India. Now these days it has been raining Android 12 custom ROMs and yes, we are talking about yet another custom ROM which has got its first build or initial build of Android 12. We are talking about AirOS version 12 experimental for the Mi 11X, the Redmi K40 and the Poco F3. I've flashed it since yesterday, I have tried a bunch of things, so this is the initial review of 24 hours of you should try it or not, how good is it, or how good how bad is it and stuff like that but before we get into the details well if you haven't already please subscribe if you like to see custom rom content like this every single day because we upload two to three videos every single day and also hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified every time i upload a video in the description of each video you will have a link to our telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people with similar devices chatting with each other so join us there and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. my name is Kalash, let's get going. Alright, so let's see what we have here. We have AirOS 12 Experiments Android 12 updated on the 23rd of October 2021. Now I know I'm making this video a little late but there are reasons behind that and let's not get into that. You have your flashing instructions and also let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a video of how to install AirOS the official way because that apparently makes a difference and you have the change log and stuff like that. So let's quickly go ahead and talk about this wonderful ROM. Now you do see that I have the phone charged to 100%. That means I have tested the charging with the 33 watt charger and I have also sort of tested the battery backup, the benchmark numbers, the smoothness of the UI and this video will give you a clear answer if you you should give it a try or not. Now the moment you boot into this particular ROM you will see that you're greeted with a very very clean and minimalistic look. You don't really have a lot of applications. All these applications that you see over here are my daily usage apps that I use that are installed over here right. So if you see over here you have a very very basic camera application ignore that there's no bug in the camera that's because of different lightning conditions but yeah the camera application is very basic and it works fine you can definitely go ahead and install gcam and it should be working just fine as well from the top to bottom you do see the whole android 12 thing going on with material you doing its magic you do have the power key over here in the center and you do have the setting shortcut and the option to edit quick tiles now you do have your privacy quick tiles over here which gives you you know the option to display disable or enable mic access, camera access and location access and then you have extra dim and a couple of other features. So the quick tiles are working just fine, no issues whatsoever. Now if you talk about the screen recorder, it does have device audio and microphone so it can record internal and external audio. So let's click on start over here. You do get a timer and then the screen recording starts. So let's see here. Well, at least in the UI, I don't have any stutters. Let's actually go to Google because we don't have Google feed there. Let's go ahead and reload it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I don't see any stutters in the UI while recording, which is good because in most of the Android 12 custom ROMs, if I record gameplay using the inbuilt screen recorder, I am having issues. So let's see over here. Let's open this using Google Photos. No issues there. Yeah, so there are no stutters, no issues at all when it comes to, you know, recording the screen and that is something really, really neat. So the screen recorder works fine. Apart from this, you have screencast, you have nearby share, you have dark theme and all those options which are working perfectly fine. Now over here, you do have home settings in which you have a very, very basic like bare bones launcher. I don't know. I think this is a quick step launcher that they have, right? That is the reason it has very, very few features. Moving on, you have the customization option of wallpaper and style where you can go ahead and, you know, select another wallpaper and the theme of the device along with Monet UI will change. A good thing to test over here is does the keyboard follow Material U? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and check the calendar maybe if it is following Material U. Yeah. I think the calendar is following material use, so the keyboard will as well. So complete material you working like a charm for you guys, no issues there. And if you talk about widgets, you have your usual Android 12 widgets, which are working absolutely fine. So let's quickly go to settings and let's go to the Android version. If you keep tapping on it and take this to say 12 o'clock, 
you have the Android 12 Easter egg. They are using an arrow kernel and this is the build number. Of course, this is based on Android 12 stable, so you should not have any issues at all. Now, if you go to system, you do have gestures over here in which you have different styles of system navigation, which you can go ahead and enable or disable. And you do have a prevent ringing, press and hold the power button for assistant and stuff like that you don't really have the three finger screenshot option available you do have the built-in updater and regular updates have ended for this device i really don't know if that's going to work in the future or not but moving on if you actually have a look you have network and internet where you have all the advanced android 12 features working like a charm you don't have any issues with the wi-fi 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz everything works absolutely okay then you have apps, you can see all the applications and make changes to them like default apps, screen time, unused apps, special app access, and then you have notifications. So, you know, as you can see over here, I have enabled notification history and it is working like a charm. You do have the bubbles feature as well. So the apps that support bubbles will work absolutely fine. You should not have any issues with those apps there. And then you have the battery. As you can see over here, battery percentage, you do have thermal profiles, which is good. As you can see, I have enabled thermal profiles for benchmark applications. And if you go to battery saver, you do have the option to reduce refresh rate. And the battery backup is pretty decent. The charging speeds are pretty decent. Let me show you Accu battery over here real quick. Now, if you talk about discharging, as you can see, it can give you about six hours of screen on time and 24 hours of usage and as far as the charging is concerned as you can see over here it charged 62 percent in 55 minutes so around one hour 30 minutes and you should have a complete charge so it's not as fast as you know the stock mia rom but trust me the charging speeds are pretty insane and you will not have any issues topping up the device at all right now moving on you have options of storage over here and then you have the sounds option in which you have clear speaker and all the usual stuff that you get with Android 12 ROMs. Now, once you go to display, you do see that you have these very, very basic options, but you have the minimum and maximum refresh rate between 60 and 120. And you do have this option of increase touch responsiveness, which is really, really good. And as I said earlier, you have your wallpaper in style over here. And under security, you have your fingerprint scanner, which works absolutely fine. Although there is one thing that I found about the fingerprint scanner on this particular ROM. When the screen is turned off, like when you are on always on display, sometimes, you know, sometimes the fingerprint won't work. And once you've, you know, gone ahead and enabled it, the fingerprint will work fine. You see that it just happened right now. So probably that is a bug that they will fix in the later updates. And uh, apart from this, you have your standard detailed android 12 privacy dashboard and privacy settings over here which you can you know go ahead and access you have the option of arrow os stats which gives us a hint that this is a custom rom and then you have your granular control on location access you have your passwords and accounts digital well-being is present and it works like a charm no issues there and then as i said you have system so all in all if you ask me about aero s12 on the mi 11x trust me it is a brilliant start you know i've not had any random reboots i've not had the phone overheating i've not had any major issues at all the phone has been working just fine in the last 24 hours it's not that difficult to flash and the best part is the smoothness because we have enabled 120 hertz now you will see how smooth this particular rom is so you know towards the end of the video i would like to share the benchmark numbers right now but before before that you know one more mention that the smoothness on this rom is just next level so let me show you a ufo test over here which will you know give us a clear indication of what refresh rate are we running at as you can see we are constantly running at 120 fps which is really really neat now let's quickly go ahead and talk about the benchmark numbers of aero os 12 so let's first talk about the cpu throttle test all right, now, as you can see over here, the average performance score was 228,896 GIPS and the CPU throttled to 91% of its max performance. So that's a pretty decent score for an initial build of Arrow OS 12. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Geekbench numbers over here real quick. 957 single core, 2881 multi-core. Not the best score, not the highest score. We are missing about 50 points on the single core and about 500 or 400 points on the multi-core compared to the latest Android 12 beta on MIUI. But things will improve with time, so nothing to worry there. 
And if you talk about Antutu benchmark over here, you have 638, 152 as the score. Over here as well, we're missing around 50 or 1000, 40 to 50,000 points. Now, apart from this, if you talk about safety net, safety net is passing, it's working absolutely fine. And that's a good start for any particular ROM team. As you can see over here, the device is certified. And if you talk about DRM info, Widevine L1 certification is present. So although this is an experimental initial build of Aero OS 12 for the Mi 11X, trust me, it is working great. It is ready to be used as a daily driver apart from one or two minor bugs here and there, which should not be a deal breaker. I have not tried gaming, but from the capabilities of the Snapdragon 870 and the, looking at the benchmark numbers, it doesn't really look like there would be a problem gaming. Although it might not give you esports level performance, but you can use this as a daily driver. You can play games for a couple of hours casually and you should be good to go. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this initial impression and quick review of Aero S12 for the Mi 11X. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.